leaders have got a lot of skills, particularly around the logistical, practical aspect of running a business. I mean, all leaders are pretty numerate, uh, they're pretty good at rallying teams around causes. If I had to specify a weakness, they tend not to be so good at stopping and thinking about the larger goals that they are pursuing. And if you look at the collapse of many businesses, they're not because you know, the accountancy department went wrong. It's because, in the broadest level, strategy was wrong. And the root cause of bad strategy, often, is simply bad thinking. Um, these are leaders who haven't sat down and just properly re-evaluated the direction they're following. My message to leaders would be that rather than paying lip service to the idea of thinking, what they should be doing is creating structures in their week, in their office, in the physical office environment that can help and facilitate the process of thinking. So therefore, they might need to surround themselves with a few people who are good at thinking. Maybe they don't know anything about the business area, but they're good at tracing thoughts, holding thoughts, developing them, teasing out nuances. They are, you know, philosophers in residence, and it sounds bizarre, uh, but um, it's surprising how few organizations have thinkers on their team. Um, they've got all sorts of other skills, but pure thought is, is unattended. So, and there need to be regular occasions, once a week, uh, uh, if not more, when major bits of strategy are mulled over um, and the conclusions properly digested. I think that today's leaders should be making the process of thinking and reflecting quite glamorous and prestigious. So rather than calling it daydreaming or you know, a day out or um, a bit of blank space, they should be saying, if you want to be a good leader for tomorrow, um, one of the things you'll need to do, aside from all the other things, um, like you know, compliance and HR and you know, mastering all kinds of technical skills, you will also need to be a thinker leader. Um, you know, Plato famously said that the world wouldn't be right until kings were philosophers or philosophers were kings. And what he meant by that is that the world needs an alliance of proper strategic rational thought and executive capability. And too often we still have a real division between those who think and those who do. In order to enthuse an organization with the idea of change, one of the things you can do is to say that change is something that could be positive for your entire life, particularly if the skills are skills that can translate between the domestic sphere and the work sphere. So a lot of what holds organizations back are bad working practices, negativity, uh, um, you know, defensiveness, uh, projection of unhelpful material, um, what you would call the psychological impediments to good productivity. Now these exist with your children, in the, you know, at home, with your spouse, etc. And I would sell the idea of maturity as something that benefits the worker wherever they are. So in other words, it's a lifelong skill. And what makes you a better worker oddly may also make you a better spouse and a better parent, which I think everybody cares about.